Welcome to Financial Insider Weekly. I'm your host, Michael Gray, CPA. My guest today is Don Pollard, and Don is a Chartered Life Underwriter, which we also call a CLU, and a Chartered Financial Consultant, which we use CHFC. And he's an insurance broker at Advanced Professionals, which is a regional insurance brokerage company headquartered in Northern California, serving about 350 clients. The company offers employee benefits, and executive life and disability insurance planning. Don has worked in the insurance in industry since 1973, and he's been at Advanced Professionals for 12 years. He's managed insurance agencies and trained agents, and he's currently the incoming president for the Silicon Valley chapter of the National Association of Insurance and Financial Advisors. Today, Don and I will be discussing the Health Care Reform Act and what that means for us as U.S. residents. Now, actually, we're going to be talking about it more specifically as it relates to employers today. Now, our purpose is to give some basic facts about the new Federal Health Care Reform Act to promote better understanding about what it means for us because there are a lot of people that are very confused about what this is about uh, and... Uh, so we're having a lot of controversy about it. As we get started, though, I want to give you a caution. This is a huge piece of legislation. We can't cover all the details. And regulations will be developed under the Act. It's going to fill in a lot of the holes. But what that means is there's a lot of unknowns. There's a lot of things that we just don't know about. But we're going to try to give you some basic information today so that you'll be a little more comfortable about uh, what's happened here. All right, Don, let's get started. Why was it necessary to pass health care reform legislation? What problems is this addressing? Well, uh, I was thinking there as you were giving my introduction, and thank you, thank you for that introduction, that when I started in the insurance business, the medical insurance premium for an employee, uh, you know, 35 years old, was about $40 a month. Yeah. And now, of the good course, old days. <laughs> the good old days. And now, of course, we're we're way out of bounds on that, and and that I think is uh, of the of the, uh, a portion of the, uh, the the problems that we face. A large portion of it is related to the, to the cost, mm -hmm. and uh, a piece of it, which is sad, is the uh, the cost uh, that we're actually paying versus what we're getting. And to give you an example. Uh, we pay roughly 16% of our GDP here on health care and uh, slash medical insurance, and that's roughly two times the median uh, of all the other industrialized nations. So we're paying them a 2x, and uh, we rank 15th of 19 in mortality from conditions that are amenable to insurance. Mm -hmm. And we also rank last in infant mortality out of 23 countries. That's that's really shameful. And we are tied for last on healthy life expectancies uh, beginning at age 60. So uh, clearly we're paying uh, a, a tidy sum and not getting uh, probably enough out of it as we should. Over the past 10 years, Mike, uh, premiums have increased 131%, while wages have only increased 38% and inflation at 28%. So you can see we're two, uh, three to four times uh, the rate uh, for increases in the premiums, and uh, that is a big, a major problem. Another factor of that is uncompensated care, which is people who go to the emergency rooms for their care, they don't have insurance. Uh, those expenses are then taken in by the states, and that's causing uh, clearly problems that we, we can't afford to have in California. And then, you know, obviously the, the bi biggest of them all is the number of Americans that don't have insurance uh, for one reason or another. Uh, so the Act uh, addresses those, uh, I think, in a, in a favorable way. Good, okay. So what are some key components of this Act? Well, the Act has, uh, I think, basically five components. We, we talk about the individual uh, mandates, you have employer mandates, you have coverage mandates, uh, the, uh, the implementation of insurance exchanges, 
and uh, also we have, of course, the revenue generating portions of, of the act. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what are some key provisions for employers in particular, and when will they be effective? Now, as we get into this, I want to remind people that uh, this act was enacted on March 23rd, 2010. So this is like our benchmark that we sort of move out from. Right. So, so we, we take our first thing relative to, uh, to employers uh, out at three months. That would be June 23rd. And that is the Temporary Retiree Reinsurance Program. And what uh, that is is a, a reinsurance fund set up for employers who provide retiree insurance for uh, their former workers between age 50 but that haven't reached the age for Medicare yet. And what it, uh, what it does is it reimburses the employer 80% of their claims uh, between 15000 and 90000 So that's uh, going to be a, a big uh, boon for, uh, for our uh, larger employers. Uh, six months, we have the, the big four, I'll call it, uh, where we have dependent coverage for adult dependents up to age 26, uh, which is now uh, going to be law. No pre-existing condition exclusion for children uh, under age 19. And no rescission of policies by insurance companies uh, except for fraud. And then no lifetime limits on coverage uh, amounts. Mm -hmm. Now, there are uh, restricted annual limits uh, that are left in for some uh, particular areas of coverage. Okay. Now we hit uh, we hit up to 2010, uh, uh, the rest of the year, where we get the small employer tax credits uh, that kick in, and this is designed for employers out of less than 25 employees with average wages annually of fifty thousand dollars or less. The employer is required to pay at least fifty percent of the premium for either the elected plan or the baseline plan of the employee and the employer is eligible to receive a tax credit of 35 percent of the employer's portion of the premium paid. Now so, before we move ahead, sure. I just want to remind people we're talking about right now. So this is, to, this, is this year. Yeah, 2010 right now. is now so in case exactly. it's zoned out you know it's that, oh, right. well, this is someday this is now so employers need to be aware of this uh, and looking at, at uh, these provisions as they relate to them. Uh, absolutely, absolutely, I would say you need to do a calculation either yourself or have a professional do it that you work mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. uh, to determine that. Okay. Uh, in 2011, uh, Mike, the medical loss ratio reporting requirement kicks in and this is going to be applicable to insurance companies or uh, possibly self-funded plans slash employers and that is that uh, they are going to be required to spend at least 85% of their premium on medical care or uh, quality improvement measures. Uh, that's going to be 85% in the large group market, which is defined as 50 or above uh, employees, and 80% for the small group or individual market, uh, which is uh, under 50 employees. Okay. In 2011, we have a, uh, a provision for the FSA, Flexible Spending Account Plan, um, which uh, is going to take the penalty for uh, unauthorized withdrawal from the plan from the current 10% up to 20%. And that is, uh, you know, as, as you know, uh, the flexible spending account plan allowed employees to, on a pre-tax basis, fund any uh, unreimbursed medical, dental, or vision expenses that they might have from their insurance plans. And the penalty in the past has been 10% if you took it out and did something else with it. Uh, 